Having agency is defined as the capacity of individuals to act independently and to make their own free choices. Tune in to get an inside look at the inspiring uphill climb of businesswomen from around the world. I'm your host, Cheryl Gillihan, and this is Woman Owned Agency. Today, I've got a very special guest with me. We have a special episode of Woman Owned Agency. Um, in advance of WordCamp US, I am interviewing Michelle Schulp of Mark Time Media. Michelle, happy to have you here today. And I am excited to learn a little bit more about your company. You have been running Mark Time for over a decade. Yep. And tech has changed a lot in that time. So introduce a little bit more about yourself and how you got into this journey of being a founder, being an entrepreneur. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so like you said, I, I run Mark Time Media, which is actually a, a one person agency uh, currently in Minneapolis. Uh, it started in the Chicago area, um, moved up here kind of 20, 2013. Um, and, and my business has also gone through a lot of versions of itself uh, over the years as technology has changed. Uh, I think if you would have talked to me in my very early days and said that I was going to be a front-end developer, I would have kind of laughed at you because that was one of the last things I wanted to be doing at that time. Um, but, you know, through actually really through finding the WordPress community, uh, I really started embracing uh, development as a thing that I liked doing. And it's become like a really great way of expressing the type of problems I like to solve. Well, I didn't know until I started running an agency that there's so much art and creativity in code and in development. And so that was certainly something that I learned. Um, it sounds like you kind of started more on the creative side of things, didn't you? Yeah, um, I studied design uh, in school. And I thought when I when I did that, I thought I wanted to be a packaging designer. Packaging design is really big in Chicago. Um, my mom worked for Kraft Foods, so I grew up around it. Um, I thought that's what I wanted to do. And digital design was just not the thing I liked. You know, I it was like, oh, it's, that's not really my thing. Um, but when my, my first job kind of before I became an entrepreneur uh, was working for a digital agency and in getting to know their developers, their animators, you know, all the people that worked there, I really fell in love um, with the strategic and practical side of design. And that really led me into um, user experience and front-end development as something that I'm passionate about. And there has been such an evolution in user experience over the last decade, decade and a half. Um, you know, I'm, I'm learning something new every single day. And I feel like, you know, yeah, we've gotten really good at it, but there's still so much to do. And we just don't know it all. And it's hard to do it all. Um, so what would you say is like your sweet spot in your area of expertise? When people come to you, what is the, the magic that you can really bring? Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, I, I like to work on, I would say like, the left brain side of design and the right brain side of code. So, I mean, it's kind of like interesting because what I what I like about design is, is more of the, again, the problem solving aspect. How do we help people do the thing that they want to do? That's why I love user experience so much. It's really about how do we, how do we get out of people's way and let them do the thing that they came there to do? And then on the development side, I really like solving visual problems. Uh, so where should things go? How do we output them? How do we build the thing that does it effectively? And then how do we style it so it's attractive? And so it gives people a good user experience while still following a lot of best practices for like speed and SEO and accessibility and all of these other things. So I'd say that's probably my sweet spot is like right in that overlap of where um, design and development meet. Are you doing a lot of custom websites then? Yeah, primarily um, I do custom theme development for WordPress. I've done some, uh, you know, more like agnostic framework driven web development before, uh, but most of my web development is WordPress, which is why the community has been so great uh, to be a part of. And it's such a large community. I mean, I remember when I discovered the community and I don't even remember how long ago it was now, um, but it just fell in love with it. It's so easy to get 
um, collaboration and answers and um, people who really genuinely want to help each other out. Um, do you partner with other agencies within the community? Uh, I do often, actually, um, because I am a kind of a solo entrepreneur and always want to be a solo entrepreneur. Um, I I find that it's great for me and great for other people um, when I partner with others. Uh, partnering, say, with a design firm means that, uh, you know, I as a developer get challenged because if I'm, I'll be honest, if I'm designing my own stuff that I'm going to build, I'm probably going to design stuff that I know is easy for me to build, right? I'm just going to have a bias. But if another designer, if I'm partnering with another designer and they're like, hey, what if we do this? I'm kind of like, Oh yeah, that's a lot harder, but actually is way better. Um, I guess we should do that. That's a good idea. Um, and on the other side, if I'm designing and I'm partnering with developers, uh, I really enjoy doing that because I can talk to them, you know, in the same language that they use because I do it too. Uh, and so it's a lot easier for me to be able to uh, ask good questions that they might need the answer to if I'm talking to a client or uh, be able to build things out in a way where I know that they'll they'll be able to tell what I'm trying to do. Uh, so anyway, yes, the 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 short answer to the question is, yeah, I, I love partnering with with other people in the space. I admire your ability to do that. I um, I tell our clients, I'm not the developer. Like I am, I know code well enough to be really dangerous. <laughs> I stopped coding back when you know it was just plain HTML. And I know it was probably more than that before then, but um, I, I just feel like HTML, CSS, that's kind of where I stop when it got to PHP and JavaScript. I tried to learn it and I was like, this is just not my area of expertise. I will give that to those who know how to do this better. Um, so I appreciate those who can certainly do that, but I, I can speak the language, which is definitely very helpful, like you said, to be able to do that translation, um, especially when you're working with clients who aren't quite as tech savvy. Um, so you mentioned that your mom, you know, did packaging design and, and worked at craft and you thought that that was the path you were going to go down. Um, what made you decide to, to start an agency? Like, what was the journey to that? Sure. You didn't think when you were younger that you were going to start your own business, did you? No. And in fact, I remember in college when I was thinking about what do I want to do next? Um, I knew it was going to be in the creative field, I was very fortunate to have picked a degree that I wound up using. I know it's kind of weird, especially in, in my industry, like most of us change our mind a bunch of times, which is great. Um, I was kind of one of those weirdos that found, oh, hey, design, this is great. And I just so happened to be studying it. Good for me. But I really thought that I was going to like graduate and just like work for an agency and kind of move up the ranks, either an agency or corporate or something, um, and really like be an employee. That's what I thought I was going to do. Um, and what made me realize that I wanted to work for myself was actually having a, having a job um, because uh, what was really cool about it, I did work at a small agency. I think there was like 15 people. Uh, so a lot of the times I was in meetings with the um, the founders or the, the project manager um, because it was so small and I was the only designer. You know, I was in a lot of meetings with clients directly. I realized I loved the client interface part of it. I really, um, I really enjoyed that. But also like being a fresh job and kind of right out of college, like it was a lot of work and it was a lot of hours. And I was trying to do a lot of other things at the same time. I had a lot of things going on in my life. And I came to the realization that I, if I wanted to put a lot of hours into something and build something, I wanted to build it for me and not for somebody else. I don't mind building it with somebody else. Again, that's why I love partnerships. But I really want to be building for me. I want to be putting those hours in for me. And so um, I made the decision to leave my agency job, which I was very grateful for. I learned a lot and kind of strike out on my own back in 2009. And here I am now. <laughs> well, congratulations. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, like I said, it's been over a decade, over I mean, 14, over 14 years. Is that right? <laughs> I, wow. Yeah, I guess that's how I kind of stopped counting work. the COVID years. I so I know. <laughs> um, but that is, I mean, tech has gone a long way in 14 years. WordPress has gone a long way in 14 years. Did you start on WordPress then? Uh, I did not. I think um, 
I was doing mostly digital design and not development for the first couple of years. I think I started picking at my first WordPress theme in, oh, probably like 2010, very poorly. It was terrible. I was like hacking at a theme. I mean, I think we've all had this, this origin story in some way or another. I'm like, I don't know, like I just want, and it didn't make any sense. And it was very confusing and I didn't know PHP and I had a, a basic understanding of HTML and CSS. And it was, I I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but what was really cool is in 2011, this was when I was still living in the Chicago area. I was, you know, Googling design conferences in the area and WordCamp Chicago 2011 came up and it was like $40 weekend conference, you know, come do this. And I was like, Oh my goodness. Cause I, I had attended, um, the CMS expo, I think either earlier that year or the previous year. And so I'd gotten exposed to like Drupal Joomla. My previous agency was a Joomla agency. Um, and the WordPress also had a presence there and a few other places. And I remembered, um, I thought I was going to go down the Drupal path. I was like, Drupal seems re like Drupal seems like it's got a lot going on. I'm going to hang out in the Drupal room all day. And then, uh, I was in the the WordPress room at the end of the day and I loved it because they had all the different color pins, like all the rainbow color. And I'm, these guys must be great. They have good swag, you know? And I listened to the, the thing about WordPress theming and I was like, oh, okay, I think I get that. So when I saw WordCamp Chicago, I'm like, I should go to this, like the price is right and I should be there. And uh, I, I remember I went to WordCamp Chicago I like sat in the back of the room of all the sessions and like talked to nobody and didn't go to any of the social events and just listened and took a bunch of notes. And I was like obsessed though. I was so impressed and obsessed. And, and at the end of the conference, they said, Hey, next year, we're going to be looking for volunteers to help us, you know, whoever wants to. And I reached out and I was like, I don't know what that means. And I don't know if I'm useful, but I want to try helping. <laughs> and and that was kind of where where that all took off was from there and um I want to mention while we're on it um a lot of the Chicago WordPress community at that time were women like women developers and they are some of the people that kind of took me under their wing and like helped introduce me to a bunch of stuff and and really brought me into the community as a person and also as a developer there were there were a lot of like women I have to thank for being where I am, which is pretty cool as a developer because it's kind of you know unique. Yeah, I think that the tech space is so dominated by men. That was one of the things that attracted me to WordPress as well. Is um, I went to a WordCamp and Carrie Dills was speaking and she was one of the people that was just very inviting and um, taught me a lot and I learned a lot from her but she's just a down-to-earth real person and she loves to educate and teach um, and just share her knowledge and so I don't know that I was looking to necessarily find that community but that community found me and took me in um, and so it I didn't plan on being a business owner either, um, but it was actually at a WordPress related event and conference where I made the decision. Yeah, I think I could be a CEO. Yeah, I think I could be an owner. Um, and so I, I think that community has has been around me and, and, and fed me in a lot of different ways, um, potentially just in my confidence in being able to be in that room and be in the front of that room sometimes potentially. And so speaking about that, that's why we're talking today. You <laughs> have volunteered and spoken at many word camps around the nation, potentially mm -hmm. even global. Have you, have you done Europe? <laughs> oh, I no, I have not yet. Um, yeah, I, 2020 was supposed to be my, my Europe year, you know, and obviously it was nobody's. <laughs> yeah, it was nobody's Europe year. Yeah. Um, well, but you are about to speak at WordCamp US. Tell us a little bit about the topic that you're going to be sharing with everybody. Sure. So my topic is on the future of designing for themes. Uh, obviously, as as anybody who's kind of been following WordPress development knows, in the last you know several years, uh, 
theme development has changed a lot with the introduction of uh, the block editor first in the content and now um, with full site editing. And um, it's actually interesting, even since the last time we've all been gathered together in one space, WordPress has changed a whole lot. And so um, I have always given talks on uh, basically like how to use design thinking as a developer or how to use developer thinking as a designer. Um, so this one is a little bit of both. I, I kind of want to help catch everyone up on, okay, what actually has happened in WordPress theming since we've all been together? Uh, what are the implications of that? How does that change what theme developers and designers should be thinking about? And like, what should we do? Yeah, I love that you use design thinking. We also, as an agency, lean towards that and um, the human-centered design part of that. But we always say, you know, like, it doesn't stop at design. Why do they just call it human-centered design? Like, it goes all the way through the process. Um, and so, you know, we'll sometimes change the the language there as a human-centered development. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But that just goes into, you know, user experience is incredibly important and understanding who is actually on the site, um, what pieces of that do you actually tackle? Is it end to end? Do you work from you know the very beginning with with strategy, and do you do any content, um, or are you focused on a certain area when you're working with your clients? So I would say I'm end to end ish. Um, in that, I think there are certainly parts of it that I specialize in, um, but having worked in the industry alongside other people, like I can usually provide good recommendations for the whole process or recommendations of who to talk to. So um, I really enjoy the strategy portion. I think it's great. Um, when it comes to content, I can usually give a, a macro level of direction, but I think I, I usually recommend like, hey, you should be working with someone who who knows your industry specifically and also bring in people that can optimize for whatever search results you want to be getting like that. I can I can build the technology to support it, right? But I'm not going to try to help you with your you know keyword optimization and then like, um, we can talk strategy about who your audience is, but in terms of like specifically what we should be putting on different landing pages to to target different people, like probably bring in someone who's a content strategist and knows that. But, you know, I know like that's the part of the process where you do that. Right. And then um, design and development again, like those are the two things that I do or I'll partner with somebody on one of those things so that I can focus on the other one. Um, and then kind of like the follow up and testing part again i'm familiar enough to know like what questions we should be asking but i really think that like if you want to dive into it like bringing in specialists is the best way to do it so i think it can like really evolve um based on also the client's kind of time energy and budget um certainly if we're working on like a large budget project like we probably should certainly have a team of experts doing it but what I can do is provide some smaller clients with maybe less time or less budget, some of that added value that you would usually need a team for because I'm like, hey, you know, I I am not the content strategist, but I can tell you X, Y, Z is generally the case. And, um, you know, if you ever have money to hire someone in the future, they'll probably be able to expand that, but we can at least get you started here. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so when you're talking about like really helping the client, um, does it help them afterwards? Like what have you seen with the block editor as far as allowing a client to continue to maintain, maintain their site after you've completed the project and launched for them? I would say I generally have a favorable view of the concept of the block editor is kind of like a specific way of saying it um i think that it what it's trying to do is super cool and the clients that are a little more tech savvy are very happy with it because they've been frustrated with the limitations of how things were before. And, you know, if they can kind of follow me through some of the learning curve of getting used to it, um, they are, they're pretty excited about, oh my gosh, like 
I can just make these landing pages here. I can do this thing. I can add this stuff. And like, I don't have to ask you. I love that. It does still feel like the user experience isn't quite seamless. So um, there are still aspects of it, both for me and my clients that can be frustrating, things not quite behaving the way you'd expect. Um, it's not, you know, I wouldn't call it like, consistently stable, right? It really depends on the client. Um, I still build everything in the block editor, but maybe for clients that uh, need a little more handholding, like we will probably lock more things down. I'll probably kind of walk alongside them in more of a consulting relationship to help them build stuff. But, but for the ones that kind of love to tinker, they think it's great. And, um, and they think it's, it's great. And it's, better than some of the other solutions that have existed before because they're not overwhelmed with all the settings and details. They can just do the content layout. And, and as a user experience person, you know, I think that's great because that's the core of what they're trying to do. Yeah, I have to remember that as well when I when I look at and when I evaluate something like the block editor editor, primarily because I feel like it's got so far to go already and and coming from the world of building custom and having no limitations <laughs> and being able to build everything um, I feel like it's not enough however like you said when you look at it from a client's perspective it's so much further than what they were able to ever do before um, so you know thinking about it from the the client side of things I've been really happy with what we've been able to provide um, both with the block editor as well as page builders that are out there um, it's made it very easy for them to be able to, to manage their own layouts and their own content. And that's one of the things that I love about WordPress is they don't have to come to us for a, a text change. Um, and it's it gives them the autonomy and freedom to be able to do that and, and to come to us when they need support for something and to feel supported and yet to feel like they it's also easy enough that they can get in there and do what they need to. So it gives them a lot more ownership of their own content and their own site and their own business because a lot of times we're working you know b2b we're working with other businesses yep so. I, uh, well i wanted to mention because you you kind of brought up this this a lot this struggle that i think a lot of people in in design are feeling with stuff like the block editor where like it's not bespoke enough to like give us the control that we want to have but it is it's but it's like but it is giving our clients like this flexibility that they want. And what, I mean, I think it's funny because in WordPress in general, even long before the block editor, um, you know, in, in general with like dynamically generated content that is separate from display, there's this, this push pull that designers have been feeling between like, you know, designers are people that are trained to like be in control of things. Like that's part of our job description. Like we want to lock things down and like really make sure that it, you know, everything's following the messaging, everything's following the brand, every pixel is accounted for, like it's perfect no matter where you look at it. And that's, that's great. But like, the web isn't static, you know, once we lock it all down and do this one thing and it's like really great, it's like, okay, cool. It's great for this one second of time, but then time is going to pass and needs are going to change and messaging is going to change and layouts are going to change and audiences are going to change. And like, we have to create something that grows with that. And I think that's been the struggle kind of from day one of, of, you know, dynamic content in general. And now with the block editor, we've kind of, combined content with layout in this way that's very empowering for the end user, but like really challenging for a designer to deal with. And I've known ever since kind of I've been up on stage talking, you know, a fear that I'm hearing from designers is like, what is the point of me if I can't control everything? Like, what is the point of me if people are just going to change everything that I'm doing? Like, why am I here? Um, and and with each technology change with WordPress, you know, I try to address some of that fear. And that's certainly something I'm going to talk about in, in my talk is like, what's the point of me if like themes aren't even themes anymore? Like, why, why are we designers? Like, is everyone a designer now? That means no one's a designer, you know? Um, that's, that's something that I like want to talk about with people is to be like, don't worry, 
design still has a very important place here. It just looks a little different, but it's really important to still have people like us that can provide this value. Well, designers and the designs that they provide are the spark to that evolution of whatever is going to happen with that business, you know, and we're not always going to be there with them, you know, in step with how they evolve and how their programs change or what their messaging needs to be. Um, I mean, I, I suppose we want to be there with them every <laughs> step of the way, but as an agency, you're going to have multiple clients, right? And and that, that business needs to be able to evolve regardless of whether you're there holding their hand or not. And I think good design allows for that, allows for that growth and allows that business to go where it needs to go. Um, so I think that's, that's a really good way to put it. I mean, designers are still very important, but clients sometimes don't know where to start. Um, and I think that's where theme shops were really popular for a long time. And they probably still are. It's because people just love, they can browse for hours and hours and hours. And I think it's just, you know, analysis paralysis at some point, because then they can't make a decision on which theme to choose, um, which is where designers help guide that, like what's best for your brand and your messaging and your audience. Um, but people do love that. They love to take a look and see what's possible because they need somewhere to start. Um, there are people who just look at a blank page and they don't know what to put down on that page, but a designer has that capacity and creativity to be able to um, feed something beautiful into that. And then from there, people can nurture it and help it grow. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, well, I would love to know, are there any other women-owned agencies that you would love to do a shout out for today? Um, I mean, the first one that always comes to mind is um, Jennifer Bourne um, with, you know, Bourne Creative and 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 uh, Profitable Project Plan and all of the things she's doing, because I think she is one of the most driven and creative and like helpful like female entrepreneurs in the WordPress space that I know and she's also just a delightful human being so I major shout out to her in fact when I first met Jennifer was when I first met Jennifer was the time when I was making the decision on whether or not I was going to be the CEO of my company <laughs> this person's <laughs> me for that right exactly <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yes. And like I said, you know, the WordPress community has definitely like been an outpouring of support and knowledge and just um, even being able to experience share like what they experience within their agencies, uh, good and bad. So, I mean, I've gotten to hear the good things and the positive things and the ways in which um, I can potentially grow my business and, and evolve my business. And um, and then the, the hard things as well. In fact, Jennifer and I just recently had a conversation on her podcast, um, which I think her new podcast is called Seeking Satisfaction. Yep. Um, and it's in everything about business and life and, and anything you want to discuss. But we had such a great conversation. Um, and I just I really admire her as well. So great person to shout out for sure. <laughs> Well, looking forward to your talk at WordCamp US. I hope others are able to attend. Um, thank you for doing this, this special episode of Women-Owned Agency. Yeah, Michelle, so nice to have you today. Nice to be here.